Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Bernard Tobin here on the Soybean School. It is getting into late June, and I'm talking fungicides with Ken Carl from BASF. Ken, how's it going? It's going fantastic today, Bern. Yeah. Hey, now we're a nice field here. Yep. Oxford County, Ontario, and I want to talk about strategy for you know fungicides. And you always say there's two conversations. The first one is about yield and quality, and the second one is managing diseases like white mold. Let's start. Let's start with. Uh, yield and quality. Where, where's that conversation begin? Yeah, so you hit it right on the head. It's it's really about figuring out what your objectives are and that dictates your strategy. So the yield quality discussion, uh, this really comes down to the strobiluron or stroby mix fungicides because of course from a, from a uh, resistance management perspective, we really like those products that have a, uh, a different mode of action, like a three or a seven or both strapped, you know, strapped on top of that stroby fungicide there, the group 11. But it really is the strobies that drive some broad spectrum foliar disease control. But the big thing is at the end of the day, we see a healthier soybean plant. And what does that drive? Not so much more seeds per plant, but more uh, more uniform seed size and bigger seed size. So, you know, you'd look at the seeds per pound, for example. We're going to see a nice cleaner sample. We can we can pick up 5 to 10% uh, fewer seeds per pound, which means a heavier, denser seed. And that's where we're driving those few bushels that, uh, that, that strobiluron fungicide picks up. Proper timing, pretty much right on R2.5. So that's, you know, those first pods unfolding on, on the top one of the top four nodes of the plant that's our 2.5 maybe a hair later if we're in a two pass program where that first pass was for white mold but if you're just looking at you know trying to drive some yield and some seed quality and seed weight by itself take advantage of that good yield foundation that field has it's our 2.5 now let's talk about white mold the other other side mm. of the coin, the other conversation. Um, you always say, you know, there's so many things to consider here, and it really starts with history. I mean, this doesn't sneak up on a lot of people. A lot of growers know what's coming and need to deal with it. At the end of the day, no grower or agronomist should be surprised they have white mold. You know, there's a lot of different factors involved here. Variety selection, some are stronger than others. Nothing is completely resistant to white mold. Uh, you know, field history has it had white mold before because that sclerotinia, that fruiting body, can exist and viable in the soil for up to eight years. So a couple of rotations for many, maybe three rotations for many. Um, lay of the land, right? Topography, obviously hot, stinky weather like we experienced here the third week of June in Ontario, right? Frequent rains, really important when we talk about white mold, that humidity within the canopy. So row width and plant density, plant type weighs into it, but it's always cooler it's always more humid in the canopy and that favors the yeah. development of disease when those sclerotinia release, you know, as a fruiting body and release that pathogen into the soybean yeah. crop for infection. You talk about a one pass or a two pass strategy. A lot of that, you know, depends on, you know, maturity and uh, where you farm. Yeah, exactly. Where you farm, how far north, how far south, when did you plant? Um, you know, the, the variety itself, although varieties tend to fluctuate a little bit with their growing environment, but it's really about how long is my peak flowering period? You know, if we're growing a, you know, a 0.5 to 0.8 or 0.9 maturity group soybean, your peak flowering period might only be three weeks. So if you're looking at a white mold prone environment, whether it's field history or just the current environmental conditions of the growing season, probably one pass at R2 to R2.5 is the right timing. Really, really important for growers to understand that sneaks up fast. We're standing here in V3, V4, right? Fourth trifoliate is just unfolding. We're not that far away. Yep. We're a couple weeks. Summer solstice was Friday, I believe. So we're looking at, you know, these are gonna trigger flowering. They're gonna get going this window sneaks up very fast. So single pass, we're targeting that timing. Um, you know, really important to be preventative and be on time with that pass because if we miss that window and white mold gets into that field or say we decline not to do it because we feel we're, oh, we're gonna be okay, yeah. weather turns, now we're pushing the rope uphill in terms of trying to get on top of white mold and really once the end of July, first week of August comes, if there's no applications down, that's a tough one. Mm. You mentioned two pass. two pass. Yep, two pass is an interesting one to burn because now you get to play some cards a little bit, right? Yeah. You can you can play the true white 
white mold product, right? Look for those best white mold products in the marketplace. They may or may not contain a strobe, but we really want to look for strength and white mold for that first pass. Isolate that product, go with the one that fits your program, and, uh, and get that down on time. And then 10 to 14 days later, you're coming in with a strobe mix product, like I talked about earlier, to drive that seed weight and dry, you know, continue with that plant health. A lot of those products have white mold activity, so we're going to extend the white mold activity that was that was started, initiated by that true white mold product first. So, you know, that may turn into like an R2 to 2.5 first pass, and then an R3 second pass. Really encourage growers and custom applicators as well as if we get that really, really prone, high humidity, frequent moisture trapped in the canopy type environment, that 10 to 14 days, don't be ashamed to be seven to 10 apart with those passes. You'll be rewarded for it. Hey, final thing, and that is about staging. So mm -hmm. important, you know, whether it's uh, R2, 2.5, 3. We'll put a graphic up here on the screen. Take us through the stages so we really know what we're trying to pinpoint. Yeah, the, and, and first caveat, stages can overlap makes it even more fun uh, uneven beans in some fields. Generally, you manage your first crop as your best crop, but you'll have to figure that out with your agronomist on how you want to play that game. And then chances are those those areas that are white mold prone are, are probably also the areas that are best established in those variable fields. So that adds another wrinkle into the whole discussion. Pinpoint the staging. So R2, basically uh, they term that as full flower, which means a flower present on one of the top two notes. R2.5, uh, moving into R3, we're going to be looking for those first unfolding flowers on the top four nodes of the plant. That's really what you're looking for. Um, you know, the favorite or the preferred point of entry as far as that white mold pathogen getting into the plant is those senescing flowers. So we want to, we want to key in on those timings and those growth stages. You have some options in there. Uh, generally, I like to have weed control done before we get to this flowering stage, but there may be an option to put in late glyphosate. Um, you know, I, I would I would encourage the conversation to be more about you know where were the gaps in weed control, whether it was weather or not enough residual horsepower up front. We could have that soybean aphid thing come along. Let's hope we don't. Really caution growers. Uh, once you start putting three things in the tank on a stress crop, we're introducing more stress as the soybean plant has to metabolize those three chemistries. So really try to limit it to two things, either a fungicide or insecticide is warranted. Fungicide plus, plus you know, the simple herbicide like glyphosate, for example, uh, to clean up some late uh, grass breaks or whatever. But keep it simple on this fungicide pass. Awesome. Well, Ken, great insights. Always great to have you on the Soybean School. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the opportunity again, Bern.